Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Beatrice. Welcome back if you've been here before. This is a yin yoga class for a hip flexors, for a psoas. It's going to be quite a deep release. Um, so do have um, a few props around you. I'm going to be using two blocks, a bolster and a blanket. One block, if you don't have two, should be enough. Um, the blanket, if you don't have one, you can use a pillow instead. And for the bolster, please do have one. If you don't, um, you can stack a few pillows, two or three, um, as, a, as an option as well. I'll give you different options anyway for the posture, which could be quite an intense posture, so I'd like you to have a few props around. So when you're ready, hop on the mat with me. So starting this class from the ground in Shavasana, coming all the way down to our back. Have your blocks close by. We'll use it for our first posture, which is going to be a supported bridge with extended legs. So coming all the way down to our back, finding a comfortable position, lengthening the legs down if possible, if there's any lower back pain. As always, you can keep your knees bent and the feet wide and the knees together. But because we are trying to release the psoas, the hip flexor muscles, which is here at the front, it would be better if we could keep the legs straight. So coming down to the ground, you can keep your hands actually on the hips, just connect with the area of the body. Make sure your chin is slightly tucked in towards the chest, towards the neck. Feet are nice and wide, your shoulders relaxed. If you feel safe, you're welcome to close your eyes. to connect with your breath. I'll try to speak the least I can through this class because I'd like you to relax as much as possible but I'll just start with a little bit of an introduction here in Shavasana. So our psoas muscle starts from T12 so about the beginning of our lower back it goes all the way to, down through the lower back and then to forward and into the femur, so the thigh bone. So it's deeply related with our um, lower back. It tends to get tense if we sit for long times, if we drive a lot, perhaps even if we cycle a lot. So it's nice to release, especially these days that we spend a lot of time on a laptop or anyway seated in the office. It's also connected to the diaphragm, to our breath. So bringing that attention now into the breath. Just feeling unnatural rising and falling. trying to modify the breath in any way, just trying to find the calmest space. Perhaps setting the intention to be present. To let go. Relaxing our forehead, our jaw. shoulders and back. Taking a moment at the hips, no 
we're just saying if we can give a little bit more release already using the exhale to soften not only the hip um, the hip flexors but also the glutes Starting with our first posture, gently floating open the eyes if that um, is good for you. If you can reach your blocks and you know where the supported bridge is, you don't need to open your eyes. Just grab your block. You can use one or two blocks, but um, try to come to um, the first height first. So bring the block just under the sacrum and relax your back there. So I quite like to stay here and perhaps add another block at the same level so that I've got a bit more support for my lower back and I can give um, that relaxation for the hips, for the hip flexors. You can also just have one block and maybe bring it to the second height and relax there. So it's really your choice, but if you can have two blocks, if you want to go higher, you can stay at one block. That's perhaps a bit better. And then from here, lengthening the legs forward, so straighten the legs down, feet are still wide, let them be nice and floppy. Open up this front of the body. You can keep your hands on your abdomen or you can open out either side. Let your chin keep, keep tucked into the chest. Let your shoulders relax. And if you opened the eyes, you can close them back off. Staying with the breath. If at any point you feel any sharp pain in the lower back, especially as you extend the legs, you can come back, back to bent knees or you can do one leg at a time. So you can perhaps bend one knee and have the other leg straight and then change. There's always an option. Just try not to feel any pressure in the lower back. Another thing you can do is just lower the block to a lower height. any posture focus your attention on the hip flexors on the psoas imagine that muscle going from the lower back all the way into the upper thighs
slowly begin to come out of the posture. So bending one knee at a time, maybe even holding the back of your thigh with the hand, sliding the foot in, and then the other foot. Slowly, slowly. If you have two blocks, remove one first. Engage your glutes, lift the hips. Take it out. Second one. Take it out. We're staying on our back. Before we go to the next posture, slowly bringing the knees into the chest, just a bit of mobilization of the back. Quite a deep extension for the lower back as well as opening up the front of the body. So hold your knees and just rock them forwards and backwards. Just feel that length coming into that lower back. Once you're ready, come back to stillness, bring the soles of the feet on the ground. The next posture is still, there's still the option to be on the ground, but we're starting from seated because it can be quite intense. So come to your side first, use your top arm to support your back and lift yourself up. Now from here, grab your bolster or um, your pillows. So they come into the back um, of your mat. So just bring in the bolster length lengthwise so you can then release down on the mat if you don't have the bolster and you have pillows instead stack a couple of them on top of the other and bring them sort of between your shoulders and the head so starting here with your knees bent bend your left knee a bit more bring that left foot behind so it comes to the side of your glute toes point back so it's a half um, saddle. You can stay here with your right knee bent or you can straighten the leg down. And this might be enough opening from, for the quads. We are trying to get a bit deeper into the hip flexors. So for that, we need to lean back. If this is too much already, stay here. It's not gonna target the hip flexors as much, but that's fine. If that's fine, Relax that left, that right foot and begin to lean back onto the bolster or the block or the pillow. Lean back. If you have that block close by, bring it under the head or you can use that blanket as well. Just wrap, um, fold it up and try to relax here. If it gets too intense, please come out. You can also lean back while keeping that right knee bent and the feet flat on the ground. So there's a choice for everyone. We're not going to stay here for five minutes slightly shorter, a couple of minutes here. And you can relax the arms either side of your body. If it feels like you're tensing up the glute on that right side, relax. Again, a little bit of extension in the low back. So if it's uncomfortable, please stay upright. Feel like you're tensing up the left thigh, release.
to come out of this, begin to take yourself up onto your forearms, press up, tuck the chin into the chest quite a bit, and then using your core muscles, pressing up with the hands, come up to center. Slowly bring that right, um, left foot back around to the front. Start with your left knee bent, bend your right knee, bring that foot around. Feet, um, toes point back. Try to keep both sitting bones on the ground and then begin to lean back on this side. Actually, you can start with the knee bent and then when you come down, you can maybe straighten that knee. So find your block or your blanket under the head. Obviously always option to stay upright as well. And then maybe straight and then left knee down. Same amount of time on this side. I forgot to mention if you have knee pain um, here, especially sharp, sharp pain, um, do skip this posture um, and go straight to the next one. that time less you can do this posture you've been assessed your knee pain has been assessed and you know you can do this um, that's fine shoulders here as well just let them open it's quite a nice opening for the shoulders if you're leaning back onto a bolster as well so the whole front body should feel nice and open after this class Press yourself up with the forearms as you tuck the chin into the chest, lift the shoulders, perhaps bring the hands a little bit farther back to press yourself up all the way up. And then slowly bring that leg back in front. You can remove the bolster, won't need that anymore, but you do um, still need the two blocks. You might need the two blocks, might not. Coming up to our last posture, which is a either side as well. Starting up on our hands and knees, which is probably, for me, this is the deepest one of the practice, the most intense, but obviously depends on, um, on each, each person's body. So take the hands down onto the ground. There's two ways to come into this. This is dragon, the next one. So you can come up onto your knees and then step right leg forward, drop the hips, come into dragon. Um, doesn't really matter if your knee is not exactly in line with your ankle, but kind of find the place that works for you. And we're starting, you can either have your two blocks either side of your foot or either side of your thigh and drop the hips nice and low. Feel that opening into the back of your left, the front of your left thigh into the hip flexors there. Or you can have the hands onto your thigh as well. Doesn't really matter. So starting here and then maybe going a bit deeper if that feels appropriate for you. Trying to keep breathing here and try not to force yourself 
too far down, um, again, not pain. Always a bit of challenge, try not to just come to a place of no sensations, but a bit of sensation is fine, never pain, never forcing, always allowing the body to be exactly where it is and it will unfold in time. If you'd like to come a little bit deeper, bring the right block to the inside of your foot, walk the foot out to the edge of the mat. And you can come a bit forward with the blocks and perhaps come a bit lower towards the ground. If it's still not enough, remove the blocks and come all the way down to the hands. You can bring the right foot onto the outer edge and let the knee drop out to the side. Another thing you can do is come all the way down to the forearms, it can be really, really intense. It's also gonna target that right side. So make sure you come to a place that works for you. Just one more minute here. softening the hips. Slowly begin to come up on the hands if you're on the forearms. If you're on the hands, just invite that foot in, back to centre. And you can slowly bring the hips back and straighten that front knee. Taking a moment to feel any movement in the body that releases the posture for you. You can take a downward facing dog. You can take a child's pose. Step back. Gently sit back for a moment. Once you're ready, go into the other side. So lifting up, perhaps coming all the way up to the knees, and then stepping the left leg forward. Um, forgot to mention on the other side, you can bring um, the blanket underneath your knees here and just support um, that knee not to feel any pain. Also, don't try not to be directly on the kneecap. So not on the center of your knee, but farther up, onto almost towards the thigh. So starting here with the blocks either side of the foot, Right, you can have the hands on your thigh. Any option is fine. As long as you feel that, release it to the hip flexor into the front of your right thigh and hip now. As even in, maybe even in the groin. Also notice uh, what's happening in your body. Sometimes we feel more sensations in the psoas and the hip flexor if we stay upright here. And if we come down, it's gonna come more to that front leg. Instead, so have a feeling for yourself. Everyone's different. farther down you're welcome to remove the blocks or just bring them on the inside and just take the foot out and onto the outer edge let that knee open out and you might already feel that you feel it into that left leg it's really normal if you need more you're welcome to remove the blocks and come down to the hands or the forearms 
And it doesn't matter if on the other side you came all the way down to the forearms and this side feels like it's not going to get there. It's all right. You don't have to have the same, um, you don't have to take the same options on both sides. We are asymmetrical beings, so don't expect to be completely symmetrical. In some postures, you might feel like they are it's like two completely different bodies. That's okay. If you have blocks, remove the blocks, bring that foot back to centre, lean back with the hips or take a downward dog, take a child's pose, take any movement that feels good. And once you're ready, invite that left knee back to meet the right and, and come back onto your back into Shavasana to finish our practice. So come all the way back down, release the legs straight if possible, if not you can always bend those knees. Another thing you can do, which I'm actually going to take, um, it's to bring that bolster under your knees. And just have a moment in your Shavasana, at least five minutes if you can, to notice this hip flexors area, the front of your body. Just invite that awareness to see and feel if anything changed. Not just in your hip flexors or the front of your body, maybe even in your breath. So take your time to stay even all the way up to 10 minutes before you continue on with the day or your evening. I'll leave you here and I really hope you enjoyed this class and that you join me for another one. Thank you very much.